We raise alarm when information emerged that the head of the judiciary, Madam Martha Kome, was seeking a meeting with the head of the executive, Sir William Ruto, supposedly to iron out differences between the two branches of government. This followed a threat by Ruto and some members of his party and the administration against the judiciary following a string of unfavorable rulings against the executive. We warned that there was more than met the eye in the threats by Ruto and the request for a meeting by Madame Kome. We warned then that Mr. Ruto's real intention was to complete the capture of the branches of the government by the executive by taking over the judiciary, force it to forever rule in his favor, in addition to populating the institution with the loyalists. We also warned that in, the, in this entire plan, the judiciary was showing signs of willingness to prostrate itself before the presidency in an agreement or in an arrangement that spells grave danger for the rule of law and the entire country. We now know what transpired at a State House meeting and it is completely different from the lie the country was fed after that event. We can now confirm that there exists an elaborate plan that will allow Mr. Saruto to appoint friendly judges to the judiciary with the complete concurrence of Chief Justice Comey. This was among the issues discussed and agreed on during the ill-advised meeting between Ruto and Comey at State House. At the meeting, the Chief Justice and Mr. Ruto reached an agreement that will supposedly allow Mr. Ruto to provide additional funding to the judiciary. In return for this additional funding, Justice Kome is to advertise vacancies for five additional High Court judges and 11 Court of Appeal judges. This is in addition to the 20 High Court judges advertised last year. As a matter of fact, the advertisement of the 11 judges has just been done today. It is in the today's Gazette. In that agreement, the five High Court judges and two Court of Appeal judges will be for Mr. Ruto to forward to the JSC. And he floated the names. Immediate former IBC chairman, Mr. Fula Chebukati, and former IBC chairman, Ahmed Isaac Hassan, are to be appointed as Court of Appeal judges with Chebukati being later being elevated as the Chief Justice before the 2027 general elections. The targeting of the High Court and the Court of Appeal by Ruto is intentional. The administration believes it has completely captured the Supreme Court and now wants to target the problematic lower courts by stuffing them with loyalists, with the cooperation of the Chief Justice. After filling the executive with people of questionable integrity and capacity, and who will remain eternally grateful to him, Mr. Ruto is looking to set up a user-friendly judiciary full of people with questionable past and limited capacity. And unfortunately, the Chief Justice is gladly smiling along and playing the ball. Officially, Mr. Ruto is supposed to have agreed to give additional funding to the judiciary. That is a cover-up. The judiciary does not draw any funding from the executive or state house. Article 173, sorry. Article 173 of the Constitution of Kenya established the Judiciary Fund 
which is administered by the Chief Justice uh, Registrar of the Judiciary. So, which is administered by the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary. The provision of the Judiciary Fund as contained in Article 173 states as follows. One, there is established a fund to be known as the Judiciary Fund which shall be administered by the Chief Registrar of the Judiciary. Two, the fund shall be used for administrative expenses of the Judiciary and such other purposes as may be necessary for the discharge of the functions of the judiciary. Three, each financial year, the chief registrar shall prepare estimates of expenditure for the following year and submit them to the National Assembly for approval. Four, upon approval by the National Assembly, the expenditure of the judiciary shall be a charge on the consolidated fund and the fund shall be paid directly into the Judiciary Fund. Five, Parliament shall enact legislation to provide for the regulation of the fund. The Presidency cannot allocate any money to the Judiciary. Madam Kome knows this, and yet has willingly proceeded to associate herself with and endorse an illegality. Where Kome sought money from the State House and not from Parliament, only she can explain, but it spells doom. To the best of our knowledge, the judiciary has never said that it submitted budget estimates to Parliament and it was rejected. You have not seen any petition by the judiciary to Parliament over rejection of submitted budget estimates, if any. We challenge Madame Kome to provide otherwise, to prove otherwise. Ruto is engaged in maneuvers designed to mitigate the ability of the courts to act as a check against the executive power at a time he has already muzzled legislative power through the capture of parliament. And if you want to know that the National Assembly is captured, Take note that the National Assembly Speaker, Moses Wetangula, filed a notice of appeal at the Supreme Court challenging the appeal court decision that declined to extend order allowing housing levy deductions. The housing levy is being imposed by the executive, which is also the branch of the government who lost at the court of appeal. But it is Mr. Wetangola who has moved to the Supreme Court. What a shame. His loud protests against the court rulings are meant to intimidate and paralyze the courts. The latest move agreed on at the meeting with the Chief Justice are meant to enable him, him to pack the courts with the Kenya Kwanzaa friendly appointees. The scheme is further meant to transfer certain judges from the courts to the IBC so that Ruto has a grip on the courts and the election management body as well. Where this country goes from here, should Ruto complete his intended capture of all branches of the government, should be everyone's worry. The capture of the judiciary, of all institutions, is the beginning of a steady descent into anarchy. It is the beginning of the embrace of the law of the jungle instead of the rule of law. Impunity and capture of independent institutions by a corrupt executive is what drove Kenya to war in 2007-2008. A repeat exercise seems to be underway and the results might not be different. And Kenyans have been here before. Still, when the Judicial Service Commission advertises vacancies next week, Kenyans will know what it means 
and we will get the jobs. It means five new judges picked by Mr. Ruto for the High Court and two judges in the name of Chibukati and Hassan equally picked by Ruto. And the descent into the abyss will get a new momentum. In the meantime, we challenge Mr. Ruto and Madam Kome to tell the truth about their meeting. End of statement. Swali. Self. Uh, no, in uh, on another issue, um, we are saddened at what happened uh, last night in Embakazi village where there was uh, an explosion at uh, an LPG filling plant which has caused death, I'm told by now, of four Kenyans and that very many people actually have uh, been injured. We told that people have different degrees of burns who have been treated at different institutions belonging to the Nairobi County government. We say poorly to the families of the disease and those who have been injured. We are with them uh, at this very difficult time, but importantly, we want a proper investigation to be carried out about these illegal activities which has been carried out in the residential areas where people live which end up with this kind of losses here. Uh, and we urge in Parliament to get involved with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.